Welcome to P's to your next lesson on quadratic relations. Our goal today, I can get information about a parabola by looking at the different forms of its equations. So we're representing quadratic relation in different ways and we're going to start with a form that's referred to as standard form. This function here, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8 is in standard form. Now in standard form you have to have an x squared term followed by an x term followed by a constant term, although any one of those terms could be zero, so they might disappear, but you have to have x squared x and a constant term in that order, all expanded out and everything. So that is in standard form. Now we're going to take a look and see if I can get any information about standard form, and we're going to do that by looking at the graph and calculator. Now I've got the graph and calculator here, I'm going to clear the memory, second plus 7, 1, 2. We'll clear the memory. Now it says RAM cleared. And to input that, I'm going to put it in Y1. So I'm going to enter, um, press the Y equals, and put in X squared minus 6X plus 8. And now we're going to graph that. And there we have the graph. We can see it. Um, I'm going to change the window settings a little bit because I don't need the stuff, um, if I pull this over, I don't need this area of the graph and I don't need this area of the graph. So I'm going to just um, put it in just a little bit. So instead of have going from negative 10, I'm going to have it go from negative 5 to positive uh, 15 and negative 5 to positive 15. And then we'll maybe get a little bit better look at it. There we go. Okay, so we've graphed this function on the graphing calculator. That's what it looks like. Put it right there. Uh, what is the y-intercept and how does this relate to the equation of the function? Well, here's the y-intercept. Uh, it's kind of hard to read there, but let's take a look at it on the graphing calculator again. If I want to know the y-intercept, at the y-intercept, x is 0, so I press trace, and I type in 0, and it's going to jump right to where x is 0, and it tells me that the y-intercept is 8. Okay, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. It tells me that the y-intercept is 8, and how does that relate to this? Well, let me tell you. There's the 8. Okay. So, um, what is the y-intercept and how does that relate? The y-intercept is the constant term in standard form. So, we could have just looked at that and got what it was. Okay, now this says to factor the function's equation. You remember how to factor? y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. we got to put down two sets of brackets. And when we put down those two sets of brackets, I've got x at the front of each bracket. And I'm looking for two things that multiply to 8 and add to 6. So two things that multiply to 8 and add to 6 is going to be 4 and 2. And of course, the signs are the same because that's a positive, and they're both negative because that's a minus. So, there, I'm in factored form now. Okay, so, um, now we want to put this in factored form in y2 on the graphing calculator. So, you're going to go back to the graphing calculator and go down to y2. And in y2, I'm going to type in bracket x minus 2, bracket x minus 4. And when I graph it, it's graphing its strengths looks exactly the same. And the reason for that, if I go in and take out, uh, I'm going to ungraph that, so I'm going to unhighlight that. Um, it's exactly the same equation as what we had before. It's just in a different form. Now, the next one here, number four, and you've got that on your sheet too. Number four asks us 
um, to find the x-intercepts of this parabola. So I'm going to find the x-intercepts of the parabola um, right here. Here's the x-intercept. There's one there and one there. And that looks like 2 and 4. So the x-intercepts are at x equals 2 and x equals 4. And how do they relate to the factored equation? Well, they are the numbers. They are the constants in the brackets. And then lastly, it asks us to graph um, y equals negative x squared plus 2x minus 1 and positive x squared plus 2x minus 1. So let's put those back in here. Uh, I'm going to go into y equals, and I'm just going to press clear on these two things. Okay, uh, Negative x squared plus 2x minus 1. And down here, x squared plus 2x minus 1. And when we graph it, there's the first one. And there's the second one. It says, what is the major difference between the two graphs? And one opens up. Let's actually pull that in. One opens up. The first one we put in opened down. So it opens down. And the second one we put in opens up. So one opens up and one opens down, and what is the major difference between the two equations? There is a negative in front of x squared. So we're going to fill in the summary on the next page. When an equation is given in standard form, and standard form has an x squared, an x, and a constant term, the constant c on the end gives us the y-intercept. So in this case, that will be whatever c is. The coefficient of x squared a will tell us if the function is right side up and has a minimum value, a lowest point, or is upside down and has a maximum value of the highest point. So if a is positive, it will be right side up. and have a minimum point. So I'm just going to give a little... That's what it'll look like. It'll have a minimum point down here. And this will be our minimum value. If A is negative, it will be upside down. and have a maximum value. So here's our parabola. There it's upside down. Here it has a max value. And the next thing, when it is written in factored form, uh, like y equals x minus s and times x minus t, the x-intercepts, another name for x-intercepts is zeros, will be s and t. The same number in the brackets, but opposite signs. These are the two values that will make each of the brackets zero if I sub them in for x. Let's do a couple of examples. The first one says, what are the zeros or x-intercepts of that question? Well, since we're talking x-intercepts, I know I need to factor it. So we'll go y equals, the first thing I'm going to do is take out a negative 1 as a common factor. And that gives me x squared uh, minus 6x minus 7. Now I have to put down two brackets. And the first thing, thing I look at is the signs. I know there's x's at the front, and I know that this tells me the signs are different. So I'm looking for two things that multiply to 7 and have a difference of 6. And the only thing that multiplies to 7 is 7 and 1, and luckily it has a difference of 6. And this tells me I need more negatives, so I need the 7 to be negative and the 1 to be positive. Okay, 
now that I have it in factored form, it says, what are the x-intercepts? Well, these are the x-intercepts, except we got to switch the signs because what I want is what number do I have to put in there to make the whole bracket zero? And if I put a, a 7 in for x, 7 minus 7 would give us zero. So from that bracket, I get x equals 7. And over here, what number do I have to put in for x there to get, make it zero? Well, that's negative 1. So it's the same number, just the opposite sign. Now, looking at example 2, it says for this equation here, does it have a max or min value? Well, it has no negative in front there. And no negative means it looks like this, which means it has a low point. So a low point means it has a min value. What is the y-intercept? Well, remember when it's in standard form, this is the y-intercept, so that's negative 10. And it asks us to factor the equations to figure out what the x-intercepts are. So if I factor this equation, I put down two sets of brackets. And remember, I'm looking at this up here. I want to, I know the signs are going to be different. So I'm going to put plus in one and a minus in the other. I need two numbers that multiply to 10 and have a difference, subtract sign means difference, of 3. Well, that's going to be 5 and 2. And I need more negatives than I have positives. So I'm going to put the 5 in with the negative and the 2 here. Now, when I want to find the zeros, I want to make the bracket 0. So what do I have to put in for x to make this bracket 0? Well, that's going to be negative 2. If I stick a negative 2 in for x, negative 2 plus 2 will give me 0. So negative 2 is one answer from that bracket. What do I have to stick in for x here to make that 0? Well, it's going to be 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. Or you can think of it as we need these numbers. We just need the opposite signs so that they cancel each other out. And our last example, it says, this equation, y equals x squared plus 4x, has a vertex of negative 2, 4. Okay, so the vertex is at negative 2, negative 4 down here. Negative 2, negative 4. Now from this equation, there's no negative out in front of there. And when there's no negative, that means it's right side up. It opens up. So since there's no negative there, it's going to come down, hit that vertex, and go back up again. So it must have a minimum value because it has a low point. Low stands for minimum. And what is that minimum value? Well, the lowest it gets to is negative 4. That's what this represents. The y value is negative 4. So this has a min of negative 4. And that concludes the lesson for today.